My name is Margaret Adell, and welcome to another indie book review. Right out of the gate here, quick caveat. I am coming off of wisdom teeth surgery, like just a few days ago, wisdom teeth surgery. So if I seem a little bit more low key, or I suddenly have to like cut and come back later, that's why. No other insidious things, just my teeth still ache. Regardless, let's jump in. Today, I am reviewing Falling for the Mark by Dominique Davis. This is a uh, new adult, I believe, contemporary queer romance all about this mother-daughter duo who are uh, con artists. The mother, Nicole, will convince uh, rich men to fall in love with her and then get married with a prenup, and then Maya will seduce them, convince them to cheat on their wife, but before anything happens, Nicole walks in, sees them, and the prenup is broken, and she gets a bunch of money from the divorce settlement. Well, this latest mark... Eric has a daughter named Kennedy, and she and Maya begin to have feelings. And right out of the gate, I was like, this sounds so messy and chaotic. Yes, let's go. I am pro-chaos queers getting to be messy. I am so tired of the, the queers must be good all the time. Like, yes, let's get messy. But this case, I feel like a lot of possible drama and angst and mess was left on the cutting room floor. It didn't feel like the actual narrative lived up to the promise of the premise. For example... Uh, there's one moment where Nicole turns to Maya and is like, hey, Eric still doesn't see you as the sexual figure yet. He views you more like a daughter. You need to step it up. But you never actually see the stepping up happen. Like, Maya buys some fancy clothes and, and that's it. And I wanted to see more of that. I wanted to see more of the con. I wanted to see more of Maya's struggle because she has to seduce this guy as part of their con, but he's also just a really nice guy and is really sweet with them. And um, I wanted to see more struggles of her having to keep things from Kennedy, but it never really comes up a lot. Yeah, Maya like mentions it sometimes, but also Maya is really confident considering what she knows. Like, Kennedy is, is a little bit iffy around the relationship, right? Because her mom has died, so her whole concept of love is skewed because she watched her father grieve the love of his life. Like, it's a whole thing. But Maya has reasons to know that anything between them is going to end terribly. Because, like, even as feelings start like developing, she's still on board with the con, right? And like, obviously, it's their livelihood. But I wanted to see more Maya like wrestling with things and struggling and having to do the con stuff, but regretting it because she doesn't like it. But it really downplayed that, which there is a, a time and a place for a sweet and saccharine romance. But the premise of this one promises such drama and angst and mess. And a lot of it kind of fell flat. Like, even as I was reading with some of the other issues I'll talk about later, the one thing that kept me going is I want to see what happens when the secret gets revealed. I want to see what happens when it all comes to light because there was that tension of what is Kennedy going to do? But even the reveal of the secret wasn't as high-key and messy as it could have been, and the resolution of things at the end felt really unearned, and in just in general, it feels like the narrative stopped just shy of actually going all the way. I don't know if it was like fear of going full mess and having to do all of the work because if you did have the full mess and the full drama, there would be a lot of fallout and a lot of having to repair things in the relationship. And so there are all these moments where, you know, the, their parents are engaged to be married and they kind of like talk about how it would be awkward to be stepsisters when they want to date each other and so they like it says it very early on we want the marriage to to break apart so we can be together and it kind of sets up that they want the con to fall through or whatever but for completely not criminal reasons <laughs> and i just i wish it had gone more i wish it had gone full drama angsty mess but the veneer of saccharine sweetness on it really leashed a lot of the the fun that was promised in the concept now on top of that, we also had some struggles with the writing style. I believe this is the author's debut, at least fiction novel debut. I believe there was some other nonfiction stuff published, but it really does read uh, like a debut. It reads with a lot of the same struggles I've seen with a lot of debut authors. Um, not grammar problems, not like technical writing issues, 
but artistic writing issues. Um, specifically, two things. The dialogue is really stilted and overly formal in a way that makes all of the characters kind of sound samey and in a way that does not sound realistic to how people speak. For example, there are multiple moments where a character is falling down drunk or incredibly emotional and filled with grief over a thing, but they're still talking in perfect, like emphasized multi-syllable words and perfectly intelligible sentences even when they're so drunk they're literally falling down and it didn't feel realistic and as a result a lot of the characters felt samey like you would not have been able to guess who was talking without the actual dialogue tags there because they were so similar and obviously I'm not gonna sit here and be like the Cuban character should have been dropping Spanish or the black character should have been talking AV like obviously no but there needs to be some kind of character Characterization that makes it that makes their personalities come across because in a book dialogue is the easiest way to get someone's personality across what little vocal quirks do they have what slang do they use what weird way do they have of speaking or what accents do they speak with like that kind of thing there wasn't any of that they all almost everyone spoke exactly the same which really lessened the characterizations and also there was that debut or early author trick of redundant storytelling. Uh, for example, just throwing this out here as like a general example, um, the, the place is noisy and it states in the narrative the place is noisy. And then the character is yelling. And then the narrative has to tell you they're yelling because the place is noisy. When in reality, you, you don't actually need that. A reader paying attention will know, oh, they're yelling because the place is noisy. Like that kind of redundant uh, add-on and, and constantly having to explain why characters are doing what they're doing when the, the environment around them already explains why or their own um, preset uh, motives would explain why or things like uh, they went back to the indie store that they went to at this specific time. Like, no, they only went to one indie store. They only went to one indie bookstore. I love the indie bookstore scene, but we don't need to verify that that was the indie bookstore they went back to. You, that kind of thing where it's like you got to trust that your audience is paying attention and knows why characters are doing certain things. Um, but I see that a lot with more debut authors where maybe it's, being unclear as to what is actually going to get across to the audience so they kind of over explain um because I know I do that in my own writing when I was first published it was like one of the things that they had to be like okay dial it back <laughs> dial it back you gotta you don't need to explain that much <laughs> uh but uh there was that and there was a silted language so it, it still read fairly quickly but as a result it read fairly flat for me. Um, I hate doing the whole show don't tell critique because we have talked about it and, and sometimes you just have to tell. But my rule that I use in reviews is um, you should tell what you want the reader to know and show what you want the reader to feel. So I knew what the emotions were in the characters, I didn't feel them because they're not really shown, they're literally stating them directly. Like they would just state their complete accurate feelings using full therapy language directly to the reader. And it kind of took away a lot of that emotional impact because uh, I felt like I was just reading a dossier on that character. And I go back and forth on whether they're using a the therapy language in thing, um, would be a strike against realism because in this day and age if you do have like gen z characters yeah they are probably going to use therapy language but they're also probably going to use it a little bit wrong like how words like gaslighting and narcissism and all that kind of stuff have gotten twisted so it's not just the using therapy language but like an early 20 something probably shouldn't be using therapy language that correctly that spot on so i would have liked a little bit more realism in that like yeah they these are 20 somethings these are gen z they probably are going to use that therapy language but like they're not going to be wholly right they're probably going to like say gaslit when it's just lied you know that kind of thing um but in general this book had a lot of promise and had a lot of really cool concepts that i like the general ideas of um you have kennedy who two years later is still struggling to get over the death of her mother and whose father seems to have been moving on without her and is in fact not being the greatest father because he does not seem to be taking her feelings into account with his new relationship at all 
You have Maya who is struggling um, with her own guilt and things over her father leaving and thinking it was partially her fault and her complicated relationship with her mother and these cons and, and her struggling to not want to do the cons anymore. Although I, I do wish that the story had done a little more to focus on Nicole's involvement in it because I'm not gonna lie, I seriously disliked Nicole. Even like later on when she gets like a little bit of redemption, I, I so disliked Nicole for the things she said and the things she, a lot of things she did later on um, because it does try to pull the whole, oh, well they had to do this because they were, they were poor, they had nothing. And that like makes a certain sort of sense, but there's a difference between they were once poor with nothing and now they're fleecing rich dudes for cars. <laughs> like, there's a difference there. Um, and I never came around on Nicole. I would have liked more emphasis on everything Nicole had struggled with and had done wrong around Maya in this con life because Maya's not living the greatest life in the con life. And she's struggling with it and wanting friends and wanting a place and wanting a, a steady home and not having to move constantly. Um, but in general, uh, I gave the book two stars. There were so many cool ideas and cool promises, but it kind of fell flat in almost every aspect. Uh, I wanted to really feel the tear jiggering moments of grief and struggling with love, but the writing style and the flat telling not showing kind of muted those. I really wanted to love the the romance between them but again because their characterizations were so muted it kind of muted the the dynamic between them uh there were steamy scenes there are several steamy scenes and uh, they are pretty good i like them i like that we went full uh full queer romance with the steamy scenes that was fun um and there is one scene that uses a toy that was also fun uh but in general i wanted the plot to go harder i wanted it to be full messy angst emotionally messy. I wanted all of the tear jerking moments and it felt like there was this layer of something like a clear film put on top so that we didn't actually touch all the messy stuff. But I mean, this is art. Art is meant to touch the messy stuff. I wanted that. I wanted the angst. And I do still think that this author uh, can develop and do fantastic things moving forward. Um, like I said before, a lot of the stuff was just standard debut author stuff that a lot of writers go through um, and, and kind of have to learn. Artistic style is so hard to learn how to write. Um, and, and it is so hard to just trust that your reader is going to know what you mean without over explaining, especially in an age of so many bad faith criticisms online. But uh, I am not going to continue with this particular series. There is a sequel where uh, Nicole has her romance. Um, but I am not going to be continuing with that one. I'm going to call it here. However, as usual, I would still be open to looking at anything else from this author. This one particularly just wasn't exactly hitting it for me. And with nothing else to say, I hope you have a wonderful day and a marvelous tomorrow.